Well, one of the interesting things is when we look at spinal problems and back problems, we've got to remember there's three movement patterns we're going to work in, whether we have to restore a person to. So very much the first area that we clear is forward and backwards. We've done a lot of work with hip hinging. It's forward, backwards, forward, backwards. We're teaching how to hinge forward and backwards. Human bodies just don't work in straight lines though. We do side to side as well. We've got to look at the frontal plane. Now, one of the movements I like to begin to bring this in with is the windmill. So, with Danny and myself, what we tend to do, we tend to go through a series of movements. We brace up the core with some planks, then we introduce the hip hinge to get the person moving well, and then we introduce this frontal plane integration with the windmill. Danny, you can cue Julie through this, you do it so well. So, Julie, prepare, Danny's gonna take over. Okay, so the first exercise we'll be performing is the front plank. So Julie, we'll just get you down onto the towel there, coming into that nice front plank position. And we have to remember with this, we don't have our hands together. We're not doing the footy player style front plank. We actually want our core activated. So hands at 90 degrees, good. And really just engaging through the front of the core there, good. We can bring those hips up just a little and really crunch those abs, good. So we'll hold this movement for about 30 seconds or so, just enough to get everything activated and nice and tight in this plane here. Fantastic. Once Julie's done 30 seconds of that, we will go straight into the side plank. Good, so turning onto your side, arm at 90 degrees, making sure the elbow is directly under the shoulder. And here she is doing the progression here, which looks fantastic. So. The most important thing with this is we keep our hips nice and elevated and as you can see Julie running through the progression here of lifting her leg off the top there. So it's really challenging the stabilizers on the underside here. One more of that and then we'll swap sides. So obviously we want to nail that side plank position first without the leg lifts before we integrate that in. So if this position here is super easy for you, then we add in the leg lifts there. If the side plank position is a little bit hard, what you can do is bend your knees and that'll make it a little bit easier as well. Good. Keeping those hips nice and high. Fantastic. Let's just show the, the regression of just the bent knees now. So coming down, good, without the leg lift. I know you love doing that one, but let's get rid of that leg lift there and bend both knees. Good, just to show the simple version of the side plank there. Hips up nice and high, fantastic. All right, from there, we will get Julie to stand up, please, and we'll go straight into the standing hip hinge motion here. Good, so hands in the creases of our pelvis, bringing those hips back while maintaining a nice natural spine curvature here. We're not excessively bending through there. You can see it looks beautiful there. Let's show from the side. So really driving those hips back, chest up nice and tall, eyes forward and squeezing at the top. With the knees, they're slightly turned out and feet just outside or within shoulder width apart. One more there. All right, and now ready to rock and roll, let's do the windmill. So now we're integrating all the movement patterns together. One leg out to the side, good. Hand in the air, beautiful. And we will slide our hand down the inside of the shin, keeping those hips nice and open. Beautiful, engaging the glutes on that side and then on the way up, the obliques here and the abdominal muscles to bring Julie back into that standing position. So this is a beautiful integration of all the movement patterns which we just performed separately before. Eyes to the ceiling, keeping that hand nice and tall. And for those who want a little bit more of a challenge, you can hold a weight in your top hand as well. So a kettlebell or a dumbbell, just to add a little bit more resistance. There is also the second variable to add weight in the bottom hand as well. So lots to play around with here. Well done, Julie. Fantastic. That looks really super. So you've integrated the frontal plane and the sagittal plane. Forward movement, backward movement, side to side, hip hinge, brace core, 
an awesome exercise. It's a really great progression, Danny. I think this is what we're looking at is making sure we're making our muscles strong, holding position, and getting movement patterns that are very, very efficient. Well done there, Julie. That was superb. Well done. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, you can subscribe right here. Oh, yeah.